I must apologize profusely for taking so long to record this next episode. Unfortunately, I suffer from a chronic condition known as procrastinitis. There's no known treatment or cure. All you can really do is just wait for the motivation to come back. Well, motivation's back, so here I am doing another Geek Up video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my microphone power supply again. And I know in my last episode, I was going to say that I was going to start using my microphone for future episodes. Well, clearly, that's not the case with this one, at least, because, well, my microphone power supply is, like, right here taking to bits again. Um, but that's because after, um, after finally uploading my last episode, I actually thought of another part of the circuit that I wanted to analyze and figure out how it worked because, well, honestly, this circuit is just ingeniously simple and I just want to figure it out and learn from it. So that's what I'm doing. And the part of the circuit that I'm focusing on today is going to be this part right here, the Cockcroft Walton multiplier, because this coupled with just the simple step down transformer um, that feeds 21 uh, that feeds um, 21 volts AC straight into here is just so simple like this is literally the cheapest possible way that you could have done this without resorting to some you know cheapy chinese switch mode power supply like you know a feedback uh, like a um you know like a um you know uh not a feedback uh what was it again i actually can't remember the type i actually can't remember the type of of uh, switch mode power supply but it's a cheapy type of switch mode power supply that uses a transformer with a feedback coil um, but anyway, so I'm going to be talking about this Cockroft Walton multiplier right here. And I've already got it mocked up on a uh, breadboard, uh, ready to start probing. So without much further ado, I'm going to move this out of the way like that. And as you can see right here, I've already, um, I've already drawn up a couple of sample circuits. This circuit right here... This circuit right here is the circuit as designed, as it appears on this breadboard. And right now, that's how it's wired up here on the breadboard. Um, and then this is the control circuit. This would basically be like a prototypical Cockroft Walton multiplier um, where this is live and this is neutral, right? So that would be, that's basically what this is right here. And the only reason that I've deleted uh, this resistor and this capacitor is mostly just for, so that it appears as just a straight up control circuit. This is nothing more than a load resistor to stabilize the voltages at these four nodes. Um, so its value is of no consequence. I've just got it at 100K just because. Um, but anyways, to explain the different parts of the circuit, because as you noticed, um, I have, RG right here in place of a diode and a resistor, specifically this diode and this 18K resistor. I've replaced them both with a 22K resistor um, because I didn't have any 18K resistors and I figure the higher value for this resistor would also account at least a little bit for the voltage drop across this diode because this is about a two, two and a half volt voltage drop across this diode and then you drop the rest through this resistor. So I figured, yeah, why the heck not? Um, D1, D2, and D3 are these three diodes right here. One, two, three in order. Uh, C1 is this capacitor right here. C2 is this capacitor right here. And C3 is this capacitor right here. And RL or R load is pretty much the entire rest of the circuit. So that's that. Um, and the control circuit, I basically just delete D1, C3, and RG, um, even though this is actually of no real consequence. Um, so that's what I have with control circuit. And then what I ended up doing was sitting here and thinking, you know what, there, you know what, there's probably something going on with this diode and this capacitor that's making this, what looks like a single stage Cockroft Walton multiplier, um, put out double the voltage it should. So I ended up coming up with two variant circuits, one where I delete C3, so I basically get rid of this capacitor right here, and um, I don't worry about I don't worry about RG, this diode and this resistor, because this is just a parallel circuit to C3, it's of no consequence. And then this circuit right here, where I keep C3, but I delete D1. So that I have, again, you know, basically a prototypical carved roll multiplier, but with C3 and RG in the way of connecting straight onto C2. So that's what I have. And so that's what I'm going to test. And then I'm just going to write down all the voltages as I test them. So I'll just get this power supply out of the way for a moment. 
I'm gonna put this right back down here. I'll scooch this over and bring in the multimeter. Because, because we're gonna need a multimeter to measure voltages. And then, power supply. So we are now live at 21 volts RMS AC. All right, make sure that's visible on camera. And then we're just gonna connect our, our um, common probe right there, so you know, like that. Um, actually, first off, I'm gonna make sure the probes work. And yep, it's measuring zero volts. Okay, so we're live at 21 volts RMS. So obviously it's not necessary for me to, well, technically it's not really necessary for me to measure uh, node A, which is this node right here, but just to be rigorous. So once again, we're hovering at about 21 volts RMS, which is approximately 30 volts peak. And that's AC at this node right here at node A. Now, the reason why I had to switch this to AC voltage instead of DC voltage is because, well, if you try to measure as DC voltage, let me show you. You see how it's trying to take a static measurement and hold it? And then it just you know keeps bouncing around and resetting here and there and stuff like that. That's the kind of weird behavior you get when you try to measure DC voltage off of an AC uh, off of an AC signal. Whereas if you measure AC voltage using well AC voltage setting, you basically get a true RMS measurement just like that. So we're going to switch back to DC though because for the design circuit we also need to measure nodes B, C, and D. And for all four circuits, I'm going to be taking my measurements at the, at the exact same four nodes every time so we can see how the voltages change. So the next node, node B right here, is hovering nicely at about 27.9 volts. So I have 7.9 volts at node C, which is going to be right here, what are we hovering at? Let me make sure we scrub off some of the oxide coating. We are hovering at about... We are wavering between 56 point... If we are wavering between 56 and 56.2. Oh, we're actually hovering around Oh, come on. Give me a stable reading. I'm going to take the average of all of those that I've been seeing here and just say 56.2 volts. So there's that. And then finally, node D, which is right here. And we are 84 point... 84.3 volts, and we are holding surprisingly stable there. So 84.3 volts. All right. So now that we have that, let's rearrange this circuit to the control. And to do that, all I need to do is move this jumper around. Well, I should probably de-energize the circuit first. That was stupid of me. So all I need to do really is just move this jumper and so put in there. There. And then move that around because I gotta hoik this capacitor and this resistor. Set those off to the side. Re-energize the circuit. Once again, make sure we can measure zero volts at this res at this resistor or this node right here. Yep. Okay, so same four nodes. So switch back to AC. Again, we're gonna be rigorous here. We're going to check this node every single time. So once again, hovering right around 21, well, it's actually 21.2 volts RMS. And it's been for both of those. All right, so now let's check node B. And we're actually gonna to have to probe right here this time. Um, and we are at 21.2 volts AC because right here, since we have a very direct connection, huh? 
Jones. Oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. Because this jumper is not supposed to connect there. This jumper is actually supposed to connect straight to the ground rail. To the common rail. Just like this. So, just like this. Eh, come on. Yeah, get in there. Get in there. There we go. All right. Take two. So make sure we're on AC voltage. So once again, measure that, 21.2 volts. Measure node B is going to be node B is at zero volts. Straight up. All right, so let's check node C. We are at, oh, come on, scratch through some of that oxide coating. We are at around 28.45 volts. So 28.45 volts. And then at node D, make sure we scratch through that oxide coating. We are at 56.7 volts stable. All right, so you see 56.7 volts is still a little bit more than double what um, the input voltage is, but it's actually, actually no, that's actually about right because that's slightly less than double the peak voltage right here, which is actually kind of a good thing. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, de-energize the circuit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start messing about with the experimental circuits. So C3, we're going to delete C3, we're going to reconnect D1 to everything. So this jumper goes back to its home, its beautiful, lovely little sunny home, just like that. And then we are going to reconnect the resistor, just like that. Re-energize the circuit, and then So once again, just to be rigorous, we check node A. And this one is hovering right around 21.1 volts this time, RMS. Node B, we'll switch it back to DC. This one is at five volts. Node C. Is 12.4 volts. And then finally node D. Is at 17.4 volts. All right. And now, finally, final version of the circuit, we delete diode 1. So I'm going to replace C3. So just like that, slips right back in. Nice and civilized. And basically just delete this jumper. All right. So now we're, so now we are doing circuit not D1. The over bar like this basically just means not. All right, so once again, to be rigorous, switch it back to AC so we can measure node one again. Hovering at a nice stable 21.2 volts. All right, and then node B is, oh, come on. Give me, whoops, it would help to switch back to DC volts. Node B is at, interesting, negative 8.3 volts. Mm 
All right, and then node C is at 19 point. Nineteen point seven volts. And finally, node D is forty eight volts on the nose. Yep, that'll do. All right. So that's all the measurements that we need to take for now. So now what we can do is we can analyze the data we've collected. So what we have here, as designed, so we have basically the same values that we that I measured previously when I um, analyzed my microphone web uh, my microphone um, power supply. So I got 21 volts on the input, 20, uh, about 27, 28 volts, about 56 volts, and about 84, 82-ish volts for take at nodes A, B, C, and D, respectively. For the control circuit, we have our 21 volts in. We have our 0 volts out, or 0 volts at B, which is you know to be expected. That's the common rail. We have 28.45 volts at C and 56.7 volts at D. Now, the way the math works with Cockroft-Walton multiplier is if you know your if you know your peak voltage. So basically, uh, V out is equal to V peak times two times in, where in is the number of capacitors in series between your supply and your load. So for example, with the control circuit, I have just one capacitor in series between the supply and the load, one capacitor. So V peak, 30 volts times two times in is approximately 60 volts. And when we subtract the 0.6 volt diode drop, um, 0.6 volts times 2 actually, which is about 1.2 volts, you actually get pretty darn close to, you know, 56, 58 volts, somewhere around there. So this value right here is exactly as expected. 30 volts peak times 2 times 1 minus your diode voltage drop times 2, which is about 0.6 volts. In fact, I can actually demonstrate that. I can demonstrate the diode voltage drop. Um, and I'll cover this in more detail in a future episode as well. I've actually got I've actually got that planned, but just to demonstrate, diode voltage drops. Connect that there, and because this multimeter actually has a mode, 0.58 volts for that diode right there, 0.54 volts for that diode right there, and then for this third diode, 0.56 volts. So basically, there's a certain voltage that you have to exceed in order for a diode to switch on and for a conduct. And I'll cover it. In, I'll cover it in more detail in a future episode. But you know, just to show you that there. So it's about like 0.56 volts times two, give or take. So round it up to 0.6 volts. That's 1.2 volts dropped across these two diodes. So 60 volts minus 1.2 is about you know, 7.8. So 57.8. We're about a volt below that, but that's fine. This is pretty much exactly what I expected. Um, uh, no C3, not C3. So we have, these are some really weird values, but uh, it kind of makes sense because after this diode right here, which drops our 21 volts by, well, 0.6 volts, we basically have uh, 21.2 volts minus 0.6 is 20.6, actually. Yeah, 20.6 volts uh, right here. So we basically haven't dropped that across this 22K resistor. So, so I think that co in com combination with these couple of diodes right here in this low resistor, I think a lot of that is basically contributing to this node being at 5 volts. Uh, and then from there, it basically just climbs very slowly uh, across these two capacitors. And I think it's partially because RG is... Since there's no capacitor uh, in parallel with it, RG is acting as like a discharge capacitor for this um, for this circuit. So that's probably why these voltages have sagged so much. Um, this one without D1, however, is interesting because I'm actually getting about four times my input RMS instead of, you know, instead of you know my uh, double my V peak basically. 
So this node right here is actually sitting at negative 8.3 volts, which is interesting. Uh, and I got 19.7 volts here, and then 48 volts here. Um, I'm not going to come. I'm not going to claim to completely understand how Cockroft Walton multipliers work. I've kind of, I've done some reading about them, uh, and it's still kind of confusing to me. But anyways, what I find interesting here is these values, right here. 30, uh, 30 volts, uh, this is actually 20, yeah, it's 21 volts RMS. Um, I'm basically coming back with, this is actually three times, no, this is actually about four times what my VRMS is. Oh, oh, those, oh, that sneaky electrical engineer. I think I know exactly what he did. Where'd my pen go? Where's my pen? I think I know exactly what he did. This design circuit right here, it's been staring at me right in the face this whole time, and I didn't see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this, like this. I think this is what the circuit has been this entire time, and I just did not see it. It's basically a one and a half stage Cockroft Walton multiplier. That's it's been staring at me right in the face this entire time, and I just didn't see it. That's that's quite literally what this is. So I actually have two capacitors in series with the load. If I can get my calculator in here. So if we take so if we take our thirty volts peak. Oops. So if we take our thirty volts peak times two times 2 should give us 120 volts though uh i think i'm i think i've forgotten something because it's been a while since i looked this up in a moment so Okay, so I actually got this um, kind of right. So V out is equal to 2 times N times VP. It's also equal to VP to peak times N. So 30 volts peak is 60 volts peak to peak. So 60 times the number of stages in between. Um, but because I have one and a half stages, Instead of getting the proper two, I have two, I have 30 times two times 1.5, which is 90 volts minus, and then we have 0.6 volts times three, 88.2 volts, which is interesting because this is measuring 80 or 0.3 volts, so we're a few volts shy, but we are actually getting approximately one and a half times our input voltage. This is clever. This is just ingenious. I honestly never would have thought of doing this with a Cockroft Walton multiplier. Um, but yeah, there we are. So <laughs> this this is just like the cheapest, cleverest little circuit design ever. So um, yeah, there it is. Just more, more fascinating stuff to learn. You can actually have half stages with a CW multiplier. So yeah, there we go. Um, hope you had fun uh, learning with me. Anyways, I'll uh, guess I'll uh, catch you later.
Side note, um, I thought it would actually be a little bit of fun to introduce the oscilloscope for the first time in, well, a proper video instead of just me freaking out over the fact that I got one and just got this as a gift. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to probe this little circuit while it's live and see what kind of waveforms I see across the Cockroft Walton multiplier. So without much further ado, well actually, wait a minute. First I got to find a good grounding point because um, the ground on an oscilloscope is literally a direct path to earth ground on the mains so you really don't want a uh, you really don't want a ground loop to go straight through your oscilloscope because it will blow things up so uh, first before we do that let's get out the trusty multimeter again and switch probes Actually, no wait, I want to keep that, I actually want to keep that probe, um, because I can use this probe to clip onto a part of the circuit that I know is referenced to ground, because unfortunately this circuit doesn't really have a whole lot of good places for the alligator clip, so I'll just connect it right there, switch that to continuity mode, so we can do a continuity test. And uh, just to be sure, probe another part of the circuit. All right. So this end of this resistor is basically connected straight to ground. So let's see here. Of course, that's an inductor. It has zero, well, theoretically zero resistance. That's connected to ground. And those leads are really close together. Um, oh. Aha! That'd be a good spot. All right, so I've already got channel two on this set up, so you can see I have it set to uh, 20 volts per division. Um, it's hard to see on the video, but a division is basically about the, but a division is basically about this much, give or take. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to connect our, uh, if we can get this turned around in the right direction. and get this securely connected to a ground point, just like that. All right, so now connect our circuit and energize it. So that LED indicates that our circuit is alive. So now it's time to start probing. So we're going to probe this LED first. Oh, we need to adjust our time base a little bit. Oh, look at that. That's a nice AC waveform right there. And it's right about... And it's at... Oh, shoot. Yeah, it's at about 30 volts peak to peak, give or take. So we have that. And then we want to probe right here. So we have... Interestingly, zero volts. Hope I didn't blow anything up just then. Um, then we want to probe at this location right here. Wait a minute, I think I, I think I know what's wrong. Ah. We want DC coupling so that we can measure voltage offsets. So, you know, once again, AC right there. And then we have a nice steady 27-ish, 30-ish volts, give or take. So, actually, what's it saying? Yeah, 27.2 volts. What's our peak voltage here? 28 volts, peak to peak. Or, well, 28 volts, peak voltage. What do we have here? Oh, that's not a very secure connection. There we go. We are at, oh shit, we're already at uh, 82.4 volts at that node right there. And then at this node, if we can turn this around here, we are at... 81.6 volts, nice and steady. So you saw at this node over here, we we were seeing an AC waveform. Oops. So just like that. See that? It's an, it's an 83.2 volt VMAX. It's actually a 27... It's actually a... Um, actually, you know, if we turn on our cursors. Cursor A. Channel 2. Of 
Cursor B is channel 2. All right, so now that we're doing that, oh, let's see how... So if we can... Uh, it's not acquiring a steady signal. Okay, well... All right, well, you know what? We'll just turn the cursors off because we're, we don't need them. So anyways, our center point is right at about... Oh, uh, let's see here. One, two... One, two... Yeah, give it about... The center point is like right about 50-ish volts. So that's why we were measuring... That's why we were measuring 50-something volts at this node right here is because the uh, multimeter in DC mode is actually measuring the midpoint of that AC waveform right there. So that actually makes sense. And then finally, right here, we just have our nice, steady, rock-solid 81.6 volts right up there because this capacitor is smoothing everything nice. And look how steady that waveform is. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. Um, so, yeah, that's basically a cockroft walton multiplier um so yeah pretty darn cool anyways side note over